And during this, I don't know if God's ever done anything in your life, but maybe right now we ought to just praise Him and thank Him. Lately I've been through some testing and trials. Felt like a detour that went on for miles. But standing here now looking back, I can say, Lord, I'm thankful. Some storms I thought I would never survive. Here I am feeling so strong and alive. The darkness is past and the morning is bright. And I'm thankful. Lord, I'm thankful like David after Goliath. Like Paul and Silas after the jail. Thankful like Daniel after the lions. Lord, I'm thankful. Back on dry ground, thankful like Lazarus, finally unwound. And every beat of my heart wants to pound. I'm thankful, Lord, I'm thankful. I battle giants of failure and fear, shadows of doubt. Where my hope was unclear, but along, Lord, you were hovering near, and I'm thankful. All the sins of my past were a thundering roar that echoed the guilt that I could not ignore. But it's nailed to a cross, and I hear it no more, and I'm thankful. I'm thankful like David. After the lion, like Paul and Silas, after the jail, thankful like Daniel, after the lions, Lord, I'm thankful, thankful like Noah, back on dry ground, thankful like Lazarus, finally unwound, every beat of my heart wants to pound, I'm thankful, Lord, I'm thankful. Like Paul and Silas, after the jail, I'm thankful like Daniel, after the lions, Lord, I'm thankful, thankful like Noah, back on dry ground, thankful like Lazarus, finally unwound, and every beat of my heart wants to pound, I'm thankful, Lord, I'm thankful. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for all the blessings that we recognize, and thank you for all the blessings that we don't. So many things that are small in our lives every day that we don't even notice thank you for them all because we know that every good and perfect gift comes down from heaven above and we thank you this morning for who you are and all that you do I ask now that you would anoint me today to preach I ask you to please lay your hand upon me and let me preach and I pray across this church and our outreach ministry that you would touch the hearts and lives of people. And we know that you're available to save, you're available to heal, restore, and forgive. So God, you do your work. All the praise is always yours. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Let's please turn to Matthew, the 14th chapter, and verse 34. Matthew, the 14th chapter, and verse number 34. I'm going to preach on this subject, storms should make us stronger. Storms should make us stronger. The Bible says that people are tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, like the wind that blows them. They're tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. The Sea of Galilee was a common passing ground for our Lord and his disciples. They ministered around that sea for several years. It was known even today for storms that come up quickly in the Sea of Galilee. But every storm we go through in life should really make us stronger. Stronger comes with resistance. You have to face resistance to become stronger. Several years ago, I began to lift a 10-pound weight. When I say that, people laugh. And I asked them, how much you pick up every day? So I began about five, six years ago. I lifted 100 times in the morning in different positions, 100 times at night. 1,400 times a week, 72,800 times a year. <laughs> I'm honest. When I first began to do that, I met resistance. When you have resistance in a storm, if you stop, you'll never get stronger. In basic training, the meanest man I ever met in my life was Sergeant Brown. He did not smile for eight weeks. And we would run as far as he said to run. And we do push-ups as he said to do push-ups. And you have to get past resistance in a storm or you'll never grow stronger. Let's please stand. Matthew, the 14th chapter and verse 34. And when they gone over... They came into the land of Gennesaret. And when the men of that place had knowledge of him, they sent out into all that country round about and brought unto him all that were diseased and besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment. As many as touched were made perfectly whole, you may be seated. They have experienced a storm. They have seen Jesus come to them, and they thought he was a spirit. And a storm has come. The winds have stopped blowing, and the waves have ceased. Even the winds obey his voice. We have the same cry. But storms in your life as a Christian are there to make you stronger. They're not there to blow you away. They are there to make you stronger. Because in your life as a Christian, you are in the midst of a society that needs to have someone who has strength, who has gone through some storms. Society depends upon our lives as a Christian who have gone through some things. We have people all around us today who need us, who have strength, who have gone through some storms, and those storms have made us stronger. Now, in the text, please, in verse number 34, when they were gone over, they came into the land of Gennesaret. Now, keep in mind, it's along the seashore of Galilee next to their storm. The society of Gennesaret is close to the place they had just had a storm. You won't have to go too far from your storm to find someone who needs to hear about your storm and hear about how the Lord brought you through your storm. Society will depend upon us 
who have faced something, upon us who have been scarred, upon us who have been troubled, they will hear us because they know you have come through a storm and you still have a testimony. You still have something to talk about. And society will listen to those people in the church world who have gone through something. And those storms are there to make us stronger. The spiritual part in verse 35, let's read the next few words, please. And when the man of that place of Genesaret had knowledge of him, now it's spiritual. Knowledge of him is always spiritual. You cannot have knowledge of him without it being spiritual. It doesn't come to your mind in the natural sense. It comes to your heart in the spiritual realm. Knowledge of him is always spiritual. We cannot call Christ Lord outside the Holy Ghost. It's always spiritual. So get the picture. The storm has took place in the Sea of Galilee. They right next door on the boundary of the Sea of Galilee in, in Genesaret. And now they understand more about him spiritually because they've gone through a storm and they've seen his power and they understand more about, more about him now spiritually. Society and spiritually. The concern of the spiritual should be one thing. Don't miss this in verse 35. They sent out into all that country round about and brought unto him all that were diseased. The spiritual did not stay in a four-wall structure. Those who are spiritual will carry your storm outside a four-wall structure. They went out to the country and got everybody that was diseased. The greatest disease today anybody has is being lost. They went outside their perimeter and got everybody out there who were diseased. The spiritual part of our life is outreach. Not just once every two weeks. Every single day in your society, in your workplace, in your schoolhouse, on your street, in your neighborhood, a society that needs to hear somebody spiritual who have gone through some things. Okay? The spiritual part. But now the supernatural. A desire to see, to see supernatural. I have a desire in my life to see supernatural things. Look at verse 36 with me. And besought him, Jesus, they might bring only to touch the hem. I'm sorry, verse 35. I'm sorry, verse 36. And besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment, a desire to see something supernatural. Now the garment is mentioned also about a woman who had a disease, who wanted to touch his garment. Listen very carefully. The garments those men would wear in Jewish culture from the law had fringes around the bottom, had a thread of blue that went through the hem around the bottom. And the law was when they see that blue thread and those fringes, they'll know that you honor the commandments of God and keep them. That's why they always aim toward the hymn. They were aiming toward the word. They were aiming toward a person who honored the commandments of God and would keep them. It's not just a piece of garment. They were aiming through what the law said that, these, that this represented. Somebody who understood God's commandments and was trying to keep them. And his eyes hit verse 36 and besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment. That's all they want to do. Let me just touch the hem of your garment. A desire they had here in a place of being supernatural. But now notice the demonstration in verse 36. Stay with me now. As many as touched 
were made perfectly whole. Don't miss it. Everyone who touched the hem of his garment, everyone was made perfectly whole. Not a one left diseased. Not a one left infirmity. Today, my friend, when you touch him, when you touch him, he touches you. You are made every whit whole. You are made whole in your body, in your soul, in your spirit. One touch from him is all we need today. A desire for supernatural things is what's experienced here in verse number 36. I will come now to five points. Storms should make us better. I'm going to give you five principles that are scriptural to help you and I in our next storm or our present storm right now to help you every single time to get through your storms. Does that sound pretty good? Let's go for it. Number one, storms should make us stronger. Why? He's the same in every storm. Think back four storms ago. Think back ten storms ago. And your storm you got this morning or the storm you have next month. Every single storm we go through as his children. We have the same Lord yesterday, today, and forever. Every storm you ever face in your life, physical, spiritual, emotionally, financially, you always have the same Lord. He is still the fourth man. He'll still be in your furnace, the fourth man. He is still the sea walker. He is still the water divider. He can still feed you with manna. He can still supply every need that you have. You'll never, as a child of God, face a storm with a different Lord. He'll always be the same. Always be the same. Second principle. Listen very carefully. In every storm that you and I go through is to teach us something. Every storm you go through, there's lessons in that storm you would not ever know if you had not gone through those storms. I'm going to say it again because somebody didn't say amen. Every storm that you go through, in that storm, he would try to teach you some lessons you would not have had if you had not gone through that storm. Keep in mind, your present storm, your next storm, look for him. Look down the road. Here he comes. The same Lord, the same Savior, the same mediator, the same Son of God, the same King, the same Lord. Here he comes. Here he comes. And will try his best to teach you in your storms. And we don't want that. I don't want to be taught in a classroom where it's comfortable. I don't want a storm. My friends, as God's people, it's necessary that we have storms in life. Point number three. Same Lord, he'll teach us some things. Point number three, here we go. Overcometh is who we are. Now, please listen. In 1 John 5, it says, Whosoever is born of God overcometh the world, and the victory overcome the world is our faith. Next verse. Who is an overcomer? He that believes that Jesus Christ is Lord. If you are saved, God has called you an overcomer. Not through some seminar. You don't have to attend some seminar. You have been labeled this morning an overcomer. Keep in mind, your next storm, your present storm this morning, remind the devil, remind yourself who you are. 
I'm not a number. I'm not a stepchild. I'm not a grandchild. I'm not a nephew. I am an overcomer because the one to overcome all sin lives in my heart today. I am an overcomer. I'm not trying to give you a cheerleading session. I'm trying to help you in your storms because most of us fold up and will not need resistance. You've got to get through resistance or you'll fall back. All your saved life, you'll fall back and you'll fall back and you'll fall back. You've got to get through something to realize that storms in your life can make you stronger. We had a young man last night. Brother Justin, I want to commend you, brother. I listened to how you ministered. I'm so proud of you, brother. You ministered well last night, that young man. And then I had an opportunity to say something because his, mom, his mama had died of cancer. He's mad at God. And why did this happen? And tell me why it happened. I was able to tell him about a storm I went through. I said, listen, son, I had a storm somewhat like yours. And I had prayed four months and four years. God, let mama die peacefully, gracefully. Let her die gently. I've had this past Friday 600 funerals. 600 funerals. And the greatest horrible death I've ever been around was my mama. She died for six days. So by Wednesday in my backyard, I got a problem with God. I said, listen, young man, listen to me very carefully. I got a problem with God. So God in my backyard, he shows up. He says, I run this thing. You don't run it. He said, Dean, you turn to me or against me. It's up to you. He don't give us no Watered down word. I said, listen, son, you'll never understand all this. You'll never comprehend all this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding. <laughs> storms like that are terrible storms. Terrible storms. Pray for this boy named Alice. Pray that some way, some God the way he'll turn to God and trust God when I have answers to his questions being answered. Back on my points. Same in every storm. He will teach you in every storm. We're an overcomer. Number four, remember in all your storms, you can't name one time that he's left you. Go ahead and try it. You might not have failed him. You might not have failed him. You might not have any goosebumps. But you can't name one time. Why is that preacher? Because he promised us. I will never leave you. He promised. I didn't promise him. You didn't promise him. He promised his people. I will never leave you. When you think I'm not there, I'm still there. You have my word. I will never leave you. I will never, never, never forsake you. Take him at his word. When your next storm comes and the winds are blowing so hard, you're almost ready to give up. He's a saint. He'll teach you some things. You're an overcomer. And remember, he's the same Lord, and he will never, never leave you. Well, the last point I've saved, I think it's one of the strongest ones. In your storms you're going through now, in your next storms, I know what I'm fit to say, I'm already getting happy. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, oh Lord, I know what I'm fit to say. In your next storm, morning is coming. Morning is coming. Listen, the psalmist says, weeping may endure for night, but joy cometh in the morning. 
Oh, halleluja. Jag är bekämmen av morgonen. Every storm of your life, joy will come in the morning. Not 12 hours a night, not 12 hours a day, but after a while, joy will come in the morning. Brother Kenneth Reeves, five weeks ago, says, pray that God will take me home. Next week, Reverend, if you pray, we'll ask you. I say, yes, I have prayed every day. God take him. It's a miracle he died. Had a strong heart. Physically, he should have lived a few more years. He had problems, but his body was strong. Death for him was a miracle because 1210 Wednesday morning for his life, morning came. Morning came. In a Christian's life, there's things worse than death. A lot of things worse than death. But your storms are meant to make you stronger. Amen. If you bail out, and you bail out, and you bail out, and you bail out, you'll never walk in faith to be strong in the Lord until you've gone through some storms in your life. That's all I got to say. Father, today, I pray for people in this church who have a storm this morning. I recognize in this place today we got some here who have a storm this morning. And Father, all of us, all of us now, who are doing well this morning, we're candidates for a storm soon. All of us are candidates for storms. We'll always have storms. We'll never be rid of storms. They come in different appearances. They come in different ways. But God, I pray this word today will hide in our heart that next storm we have, or our present storm today, we remember the points you gave us from your word. I pray now, invitation time today for those who are lost, going to hell this morning. I pray, God, the Holy Spirit, go where they are and tell them they must be born again. You must be born again. You must be born again. And for those who have backslid and have grown cold and different, I pray they come home today and say, God, forgive me. Forgive me of being so carnal, so cold. God, forgive me of playing around with you. And I pray for people trying to find a church home. God, lead them by your spirit to the place you want them to be. Holy Spirit, don't leave us now. Don't leave us, God. Give us a few more minutes, church. Let's honor his call in our hearts today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You please stand. You come. You come. You come. Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Face the mountain that I've never faced before. It'll happen to you. That's why I'm calling on you, Lord. It's going to happen to us. I know it's been a while. Listen. But Lord, please hear my prayer. Listen. I need you like I've never had. Anybody else to come off? Sometimes it takes a mountain. Anybody else? Sometimes a trouble sea. Sometimes it takes a desert. It does. So much 
pride. So callous. Your love is so much stronger. Anybody else? What is addiction? Then what is Trust you and 